everybody. Um, again, my name is Peter Hosmer, and uh, it's a huge pleasure to be here. Um, I'm the guy on the right. <laughs> um, so I, hopefully uh, this talk will um, kind of take what was talked about a little bit beforehand and uh, make this kind of a practical application. So I'm going to give you a history of a very specific thing. So uh, today we're going to be going through uh, talking to a robot, and I actually kind of changed the title here. Um, it actually should be talking through a robot. And that'll make a little more sense towards the end of this. So uh, my, my background is uh, for about the past 12 to 13 years, I've been a special effects artist. And so that's more of a traditional special effects artist. I make zombies. I do fine art sculpture. I make creature suits and uh, animatronic characters. It's a gorilla up in the corner. But uh, my, my I, I kind of branch into weird things also. I do medical simulation stuff, digital sculpting. I kind of I never have a boring job, so it's been a lot of fun. My, uh, my first um, experience with Carnegie Mellon, and then specifically the Entertainment Technology Center, uh, was before I was actually a student there. And uh, I was approached in the, uh, the winter months of 2004, and uh, there was a team called the Interbots Initiative, and their goal was to uh, create an interactive animatronic or robotic character um, that would reside in the hallways of the ETC, would greet them, uh, the students as they walked by, greet guests, direct them around over the weather. And so I was brought on as the guy to, to help fabricate this character. And, uh, and the ETC said, okay, go for it. And uh, that, was, that was encouraging. So we, we started, um, and the, but we, we kind of had a question thrown at us, and it was why? Why are you guys doing this? And we, we, we knew we wanted to make something a little bit more special um, than normal. Um, there, there's been a lot of research in interactive robots and stuff like that, but um, we all were uh, fans of amusement park attractions, theme park attractions. Um, we totally dorked out in World Showcase with all the animatronic characters of Walt Disney World. Um, but there was one uh, thing that was a bit lacking in those experiences, and it was that if you came back 10 minutes later, the show was the same, and so it became a bit redundant. And Walt Disney was very famous for um, an approach he would take called plussing, and so he would, the, the designer would come up with something, and, uh, and he would say, okay, and what else? And so he would constantly be pushing his designers, and so we really wanted to take this cool robot-type thing and push it and plus it just a little bit more, make it in our So we, we uh, started this project solely basing it off of the character. If people are going to want to talk to something, it has to be inviting. It has to be um, something that, that uh, people find fun. And so we, uh, we actually spent a couple weeks designing some characters. And we, uh, we finally um, came to this robot character named Quasi. And, uh, we, we picked him for a couple reasons. One, Carnegie Mellon loves robots. That was for the dub. So we, uh, that was almost a, like a, a, kind of a cheap trick that we, we pulled on our project. But we picked this robot named Quasi. Now, there were a couple key features about his look that I just wanted to mention. Um, the first was, uh, you'll notice his, his proportions. So while he's not a fully fleshed out character there, his body proportions are very similar to the way a lot of uh, animators will design a character. If you look at uh, Mickey Mouse, Calvin and Hobbes, Stitch, uh, Jerry from Tom and Jerry, all of these characters have toddler-like proportions, so large head, big eyes, uh, little tiny body, tiny limbs. So it kind of uh, played off the cute factor. Um, in addition to that, we uh, designed quasi eyes uh, were, were light up, uh, they, they were LED lights. And you can see Quasi's actually, this version of Quasi's on display over here. Uh, we designed Quasi to be able to display emotion through color. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. And lastly, uh, most robots, at least, um, I think I was mentioned earlier, but a lot of robots uh, tend to be a bit intimidating because of these hard mechanical objects. So his outside surface design was um, more of a rolled steel type look. So we wanted the contours to be as soft as possible. Now, we went through that project and we built Quasi and we put him in a kiosk and we put him in the hallway and it was considered a success and Quasi autonomously interacted with people. Um, but we, uh, we needed some motivation for people to, to want to talk to him. 
And so if you can see here on the right behind the screen, we actually have two 25 pound hoppers of candy. Um, and so the map here is, is his motivation is to get some skills around here. And uh, it was a very Pavlovian way of approaching this. <laughs> Everyone was dogs, I guess. <laughs> so uh, again, we were asked, why? Why did you do this? And, and so we, we kind of felt like we had succeeded at this project, but we didn't really, um, we, we wanted to create a magical experience, but we, we couldn't fully define um, what that was yet. And so throughout that next year, uh, we had used Quasi in building virtual worlds, again, uh, with Randy Pausch. Uh, we used him in other projects uh, to create some interactions. Uh, a full year later, we revisited this Quasi concept, and uh, there was a, now a large group of students, and uh, we came up with Quasi 2. And we, uh, we, we kind of jostled around some things about him, but uh, we, we focused on two main things. Uh, I, because I was the guy who was a builder guy, um, I focused on the fully fleshing out the character, making him have more movements. And then uh, we also wanted to make him mobile so we could move him around rather than this giant uh, cart. And then we also um, started to expand on the autonomous um, layer to his interactions. So uh, this was the beginning of the semester, and pretty early on, we were asked if Quasi could be the mascot of a large children's event. It was going to be held in Florida. Thousands and thousands of kids were going to be talking to Quasi. And we immediately realized that uh, Quasi, uh, we didn't want to create awkward moments with a robot. Uh, we wanted this to be a really cool experience with this character. So we, uh, we had to reevaluate this autonomous um, technology that we had developed. It, wasn't, it, was, it was actually a very shallow experience because we had only had one semester to do AI. There are people doing AI, and it's been for 20 years now. And so uh, we, we realized that, that we had to change that. So the solution was um, puppetry. And so uh, we, it was kind of funny because we, we mentioned puppetry, and, and actually some of the techie people actually kind of got a little depressed. But um, <laughs> hopefully you'll see the value of this. So um, up here I have a. Uh, a screenshot of the, the interface that we developed uh, for controlling a robot. And so, again, we, we, we before had used a computer to create these interactions, now we're using a human brain, and hopefully they can do a good job of, of creating a compelling character. So just to break down this, uh, this screen here, we actually have two video feeds up in the top left, and uh, one on the left is actually a camera in Quasi's nose, so you can see, you can see what he sees or smells in this case. And then uh, over on the right hand side is kind of a wide angle shot of the entire room. And laid over top of that is a, uh, an interface where we can actually control his gaze. So as we drag a cursor around in those windows, we can control his head gaze and his body will follow. So that was kind of the, the basics of uh, controlling a character. Over on the right hand side we have uh, a bank of animations. So we had done all of our animations in Maya, exported them from Maya to control a robot, and uh, we were able to cue those up. So in a way, some canned animations to, to draw from. The, uh, the really cool thing I like is, is down here at the bottom. And uh, this is Quasi's emotion map. And right now, you can only see four, but there's actually five different emotions. Uh, happy, sad, embarrassed, confused, um, and angry. And so what we can actually do is drag a cursor around in that window. That will change the colors of his eyes, but it will also affect the the posture and movement of some of those features. So just to give an example, um, if Quasi's happy, he's going to be green in the eye area. His eyelids would be open. Uh, but if we made him angry, he'll squint, angle his eyelids down. And his, his antennas were actually designed much like dog's ears. So when they go angry, ears tend to flip back and be very directional. So uh, we kind of use some visual cues there. The interaction was a, kind of an interesting one. So um, I had the opportunity to, to puppeteer, to be one of Quasi's voices um, for quite some time now. Uh, I guess what I wanted to mention is there's, uh, so there's different levels of interaction that happen. And so Quasi typically talks to kids. And uh, while that's happening, um, if it's a toddler or a baby, uh, those kids are going to um, have a much simpler method of interaction. 
So generally what I do with that is I'm just affecting Quasi's colors. And the kids seem kind of drawn to this kaleidoscopic uh, exchange of colors in his eyes and ears. The next age group up would be kind of tweens, and that's where we get to, to kind of have some fun. So we're, I'm actually engaging the kids with games, I'll tell stories, um, uh, jokes, things like that. Uh, but like my little teapot type stuff. The next level up from that would be teens, and that's where um, you can have a lot of fun with it, you have to be careful. Um, kids tend, to, those, those guys tend to be a lot more sarcastic, but uh, Quasi can talk some smack, so. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps it clean, it's, it's totally clean. He, Quasi's a 12 year old little boy, but he can, uh, he can lay it down when he needs to. And then on top, and then the last is, is adults. And so, um, one of the interesting things that, that happen with adults is uh, they're usually there with their kids. Uh, they tend to be in the back hiding for some weird reason. And uh, they're the ones that uh, Quasi will look at and try to draw them in and usually that involves um, making fools of them in front of their kids. So if it's dancing, the mom and dad now are dancing with Quasi, and the kids are laughing with that. And so we, we talk to kids of all ages. You might recognize one of those guys. Um, and uh, we also other kids of all ages. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the level of interaction is a lot of fun. Um, so Quasi is out, main stage. And when we're interacting with these people, um, inevitably, the question is, how does this work? Like, seriously, I'm talking about robot. Like, this is, this is not normal. And, and that's it's kind of our goal, right? So we hear phrases like, oh, man, behind the curtain, or Wizard of Oz, and, and all of those things. And, and well, actually, we don't care. That's, that's really not our point. And uh, so when that, that typically happens, um, we'll actually invite the kids or mom and dad uh, behind the curtain, and they actually have to see how it works. So this is an interesting opportunity to show them the technology. And so, if it's a, if it's a little kid, they, we actually hand them the headphones, they get to speak into the mic and become Quasi's voice, and they get to puppeteer Quasi to their friends who are still out there. So uh, it's kind of an empowering you know, experience also. So again, yeah, we, we built Quasi, the puppeteer version, and uh, we were asked why, like why did you do this? And so. Our, our reasoning became um, we, we wanted to create this magical experience that uh, was unique. So every time they, they came back, it would be a, a customized experience um, as, they, as they came back. So um, you might talk to Quasi early on in the day, go walk around, come back and tell Quasi about the, the experiences that you had. And hopefully if it's the same book that's here, or if I, my memory is serving me right, we can pick up that conversation. Um, so we, we just wanted to create an experience where kids are going to go home, tell their friends about it, and then they'll want to go to the closet. So the rewards were um, unexpected, and uh, this was um, this was huge for me, at least um, as a puppeteer. So we, we spent a lot of time working on the technology, and the, the, that was fun and cool. But um, the rewards were interesting. Um, I'll just mention one story, and uh, there, there's a bunch. But uh, we were. Uh, a few years ago, we were at an event over at the Carnegie Science Center, and uh, it was a robot theme, so Quasi was there interacting with the kids. And typically, an interaction is usually about two to five minutes, maybe something like that. So the kids will come up, and they'll usually be like, hi, I'm Quasi, and the little girl or little boy will say their name. And then they'll say, how old are you? And, and just kind of quick exchange, and then mom and dad will usually say, okay, and then they move on. Well, sometimes kids will stay, and, uh, and that's fine, it's, it's totally cool, um, but they'll stay a long time. And uh, so this was actually happening with this little boy, and uh, all the while while I was talking with him, he was writing down and drawing things in his sketchbook and writing stuff, and I didn't really think anything of it, quasi didn't think anything of it. They leave, and they come back a little while later, and the little boy had brought his drawings to show Quasi what he had seen around the building. And that happens in other cases, like the Quasi gets weird gifts all the time. But uh, as, as we were catching up on, on the little boy's day, um, um, he was showing me his stuff. And, and I found out later on that um, all the while I was talking to Quasi, 
the mom was standing off to the side. And uh, she, she just was watching the whole time. And at, at one point, she turned, and my wife was there. And she turned to my wife with tears in her eyes. And she said, this, this doesn't happen. My son has autism. And there's something about Quasi that is connecting with him that he can't connect with with, with normal people. And Merrick mentioned something like that earlier. And I, I completely agree that there's something about characters like this and their simplicity that really nail it for kids like that. So I was floored when I heard this. So that's just one, one small reward. Um, the challenge, I guess, in um, talking about this with you guys is um, we, were, we were asked why um, a series of times, and ours kind of evolved over time. Uh, we didn't really have a solid reason for doing exactly what we were doing, but it kind of became this, this thing. And I would say now, our reasoning for doing this stuff is to break down barriers of communication to, uh, again, we still want to create magic, but we also want to empower kids or other people that might not uh, be able to. And, and we're, we just happen to be using a robot for this. So my challenge is, um, why why are you guys doing what you do, right? So uh, there might be a spe special project that um, you might be focusing on, <coughs> but ultimately be focusing on what you can deliver or they can take with them. So uh, I've got a couple things, and here was kind of our whys. Um, we wanted to create something out of the ordinary. So again, along that idea of the plusing thing, we wanted to create something out of the ordinary. Normally you don't walk into a room and talk to a robot. And if you do, it's usually an awkward experience, but we wanted to create as much of a natural feeling of that as possible. Um, it just so happens that the puppeteering was the, the, the simplest approach, and that has been the most successful decision we made on Quasi. It's nothing groundbreaking, it's a super puppet. That's all it is. But it's, it worked out well for us. Um, fun enables. Um, I think Jesse actually mentioned this a little bit. Um, we are creating an experience that creates um, interest in specific things. And so we get to talk to kids, like Quasi is this robot, but he gets to talk to kids about how he was made. And that can tie them into a bit of the edutainment, like in engineering or programming, things like that. And lastly, that personalization. So we are creating this experience that you have with this robot. And, it, and it's only yours. And you can come back and you can carry on that conversation. It's, it's just like we do every day with real people. So again, uh, that's just an example of uh, creating an experience with a, uh, with a character. We use a robot. I'm interested to hear what you guys do with uh, whatever you do together. Thanks a lot.